Um, so starting from today, uh, we'll switch a little bit gear. So um, we start learning uh, um, about new physics theories and uh, what we can learn from Flamer measurements on, uh, on new physics theories. Okay. Um, so for, for um, one can uh, basically start in a relatively model independent uh, way, thinking about effective field theories. Uh, so you have already learned uh, quite a bit on uh, effective uh, field theories during this uh, summer school. But now what we would like to do is to focus on those operators uh, that are allowed by the standard model uh, gauge symmetries uh, that are introducing some additional flavor structure. Okay? Um, so as we have learned, what we can write down is uh, an effective field theory where we are summing over the, the standard model Lagrangian uh, plus uh, some, some tower of operators. So we can write down uh, some dimension D operator suppressed by some uh, new physics scale lambda. And then here I have my operator of dimension D containing only standard model fields. Okay. So here the idea is that what I've done is I have, uh, I have uh, now some new physics theory with new degrees of freedom at the scale lambda that I'm integrating out and then generating this new operator with this virtual coefficient. Okay. Um, um, where D is bigger than four. Now, oops. Usually when uh, when people speak about uh, flavor physics, what you learn is that uh, flavor measurements can test uh, new physics scales that are much higher than uh, the, the scales that are probed directly by the LHC. So um, here, at least with uh, some example, I want to demonstrate uh, that this is indeed what, he, what, is, what is happening. Um, so why flavor um, can test lambda much bigger, say, than uh, 1 TV. So say a few hundred GV or 1 TV, the scale that is probed uh, by directly by the LHC. Um, so what are the, the operators that I can write down that are uh, mediating uh, flavor transitions? So since we have, um, you know, yesterday and two days ago, we have spoken quite a bit about uh, mesomixing, we can write down operators that are responsible for mesomixing in this uh, formalism, right? So what, uh, what can I write down? So first of all, I can write down, uh, of course, the operator that is arising in the standard model. Um, so if we focus on uh, chaos mixing, uh, as we know, this is a S to D delta F equal to two, so two um, unit of flavor transition. And then uh, uh, I can write down all uh, four fermion operators, right? So the one that we have seen for the standard model uh, uh, can be written in this way. So we have gamma mu, um, d left square. So this is the operator that we have seen yesterday coming from uh, uh, box diagrams with a W change. That's why here I'm putting the left-handed projector. Okay. But then uh, if you just think about uh, higher dimensional operators, this is not the only thing I can write down, right? I can write down uh, different, uh, you know, direct structures of, of this uh, for fermion operator, right? <coughs> and in fact, in all generality, uh, what I can write down are, uh, I think, uh, eight operators. So I have uh, structures like, uh, no, I can combine S left, gamma mu D left, but then with a right-handed one. <coughs> um, I can have, for example, uh, scalar operators, well, I don't have this gamma mu, but I will have uh, something like uh, S right, uh, D left, um, S left, D right. Um, sorry, this is, yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, so there are several of them that I can write down, right? And then, uh, yeah, with all generality, I can also write down the one with, uh, with the sigma mu nu, right? Um, so each of them, of course, uh, will introduce some new physics effect on uh, uh, anti-chaon mixing, right? Um, so 
the, the, the issue here is to understand what, uh, what type of scale lambda or you know, Wilson coefficient c I can probe once that I open up all these uh, higher dimensional operators. Um, so how do I solve uh, this problem? So if I ask you what is uh, 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 the combination of c i over lambda square that I'm probing, no, this is what I want to find out. Um, so how can I solve this problem? Um, so basically what I would need to do are two additional steps. So the second step, so the first step is of course writing the, the effective uh, Lagrangian that I just wrote down. So the most, uh, if you want, generic uh, effective Lagrangian that is uh, compatible with my symmetries. Okay, that is here. So this is step number one. Step number two is that, um, so if you see here, uh, when I brought down this Lagrangian, this Wilson coefficient here will be computed at, uh, at the scale lambda, right? So this is uh, where I can integrate out my new degrees of freedom and write down the, the Lagrangian. But then, uh, um, so at the end of the day, as we know, we'll need to compute the, the matrix element between a k and k bar of this operator. And the matrix element is, uh, you know, computed, uh, for example, on the lattice at uh, low at low energy. So, for example, at the scale associated to to Kahn physics. Okay. So I will have uh, basically to do some running uh, between uh, the, the lambda scale and the low 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 energy scale uh, associated to Kahn's. So the step number two is um, to write down my RGs for uh, RGs for my Wilson coefficients. Bless you. Um, so what I will write down is, uh, so CID, I call them, of uh, mu. So this will be the, the scale uh, associated to Kahn physics, uh, say 2 GV. Okay. This will be equal to some uh, uh, matrix uh, responsible of this RG running. Uh, we called it uh, of uh, mu k, between mu k and, and the scale lambda, of my initial whistle coefficients. So those guys there. <coughs> so this is my evolution matrix. Um, then, uh, yeah, here I write it, um, so here I'm, uh, um, highlighting that um, this U is a matrix, uh, because in general, um, uh, what we can uh, you know, demonstrate is that these Wilson coefficients are uh, mixed. So some of these operators will mix under renormalization group equations, okay? And therefore, this uh, U is a, is a matrix. As an example, I can show you, you know, if we take, uh, let's take uh, this uh, operator here, um, and this operator here. <coughs> um, what we know is that uh, C, uh, sorry, C, how do I, C1 of left right of mu k. So this is a system of, uh, of um, um, O2 uh, with, with coefficients. C2 left right of mu k. Um, so I can, uh, you know, solve it at, uh, say, at a leading log, this uh, renormalization group equations, and I see that this will be, you know, I have a matrix, uh, okay, I can put numbers uh, if you like, but uh, these are not particularly, you know, highlighting anything. So this is uh, 12 minus 16. And then the interesting part is that since I'm, I'm solving these RGs at, uh, at a leading log, I will have a log, so mu k over lambda, I will have an alpha strong, over 4 pi on mu k, and then I will have my initial uh, Wilson coefficients. So C1 left right, C2 left right. <coughs> so what we see from, uh, from here um, is that, so suppose that you have a theory that uh, for some reason uh, um, doesn't, uh, let's see, um, doesn't have this uh, C1 operator at the high scale, 
No? Then you see that because of RGEs, uh, you can generate it uh, uh, via running, okay? simply because it, uh, it mixes with this uh, C2 left-right. Okay? Um, so this is the type of exercise that we need to do if we want to answer to this question here. Okay? So at the end of the day, I will have a Lagrangian now, L effective, at uh, my low energy scale mu k. So I'm doing, of course, the example for chaos mixing, but you can apply this to, you know, B-meson mixing, D-meson mixing, any system. Just, of course, the scale here will change a little bit. Okay. Um, so this is uh, my step two. And then finally, I have my step three. Let me write it on another blackboard. <coughs> so step three. <coughs> Now I will have uh, to compute my matrix elements uh, of these uh, operators, uh, right? So for example, I will have all this OI of D, K, K bar. Yeah? Um, so here, um, so in principle, you should uh, solve the full uh, RGEs, right? Um, so the full uh, differential system. Now here I show, for a matter of simplicity, the solution at the leading log. And that the leading log um, basically um, is the same if you write down here a fs of, uh, of mu k or lambda. This is higher order at this level. So in principle, yes, but for this solution, it doesn't really matter. Okay, otherwise, yeah, you should write down the full uh, RGE system and solve it. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. You had, sorry? Ah, okay, very good. Yes, yeah, good question. <laughs> um, very good. So, uh, yeah, the, 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 the last step would be indeed to evaluate this, uh, this matrix elements. And, uh, yeah, yesterday, actually, we have seen the, how to evaluate, uh, um, I mean, I mentioned how to evaluate uh, the matrix element of the standard model operator, so this was the O1 B left left K bar. And we said that this is, uh, if you want, the most complicated part of this exercise because this uh, involves uh, non-perturbative physics. And, uh, and yeah, our lattice friends uh, uh, will tell us how to compute it and uh, how to, you know, determine this, uh, this quantity in a precise way, okay? Um, so having said that, um, so let me, let me show you, let's, uh, let's get to an answer of uh, what is this uh, CI over lambda squared that I'm probing. Um, so actually, yeah, I wrote down the, the full exercise for B-mesons, uh, uh, not for counts, but uh, okay, it's very similar. So let's, um, let's work out uh, um, what we obtain with this effective Lagrangian for this delta M BS. So the, the difference in mass of the B sub S and B sub S bar system. So this observable that we have seen yesterday. Um, so, uh, of course, it's a little bit complicated because I have many operators, so let's uh, simplify a little bit and we take only this operator here. Uh, otherwise, uh, what changes is that, uh, of course, I will have to compute additional uh, matrix elements, but, um, you know, uh, qualitatively, uh, it's the same type of exercise. Um, so, um, so what is the CI over lambda squared that I'm proving, particularly this uh, C1 uh, left left, okay? Um, so the idea um, is that my effective uh, um, Lagrangian will be the standard model one that we have seen. And then uh, you can think about, uh, you know, since I have this operator, gamma mu, S left, uh, square, actually, uh, yeah, S left square. Um, then I will have a Wilson coefficient that can look, for example, like this, mz prime square. So the idea is, um, you know, I'm thinking about the theory with a new Z prime that couples uh, to left-handed quarks. So the idea is to have, uh, you know, a three-level diagram like this. We have B, Ness quark, then here is Z prime, the G prime here, 
my coupling and the mass that is this guy here. Of course, this is uh, you know, the, the, the lambda new physics scale that I want to probe. Okay. Um, so let's see what, uh, what is the, 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 the difference in mass that I'm, uh, uh, I'm generating because of this effective uh, Lagrangian. Um, so this guy here will be equal to the um, standard model contribution plus new physics. Um, where, uh, actually, so yesterday we have seen that for the standard model contribution we have uh, you know, dependence on the CKM and then we have this uh, uh, decay constant and so on and so forth. So I will uh, write down the full expression for the standard model. That is something that more or less we have seen yesterday apart from you know, factors of two and so on. Um, so this will be some Fermi constant uh, square. Yeah, these are factors that I was not putting, and this uh, 12 and so on. Some CKM, so VTS, VTB square. Then I have, uh, yeah, depending on how I, I define the loop function as we mentioned yesterday, so I have uh, MW square, a loop function of MT square over MW square. So this is my loop function. So I'm using a sort of a standard notation that you can find uh, typically in the literature. That's why I'm putting here as zero. But this is uh, nothing other than a loop function. Yesterday we call it uh, f, I think. But uh, it's always a loop function that I can compute. Um, and then I will have my back parameter that we mentioned yesterday can be computed on the lattice. So some number. Decay constant uh, square uh, mb. So the mass of the B meson. So this more or less is something, uh, yeah, this is the thing that we have seen yesterday. Um, yesterday we didn't mention RG running, uh, so I was doing it a little bit more sloppy. In principle here I will have some effect of RG running, so the step two that we are discussing. So here, this is what the, you know, again, in terms of notation this is something that uh, people call letter B. This is some uh, RG, so this is coming from RG. Some number, okay. Um, so this is the standard model uh, piece that I have, and then let's see what I can get from uh, from new physics, uh, right? Uh, so the new physics part, I know that it will scale like g prime square over m z prime square, okay? This I know. So right, g prime square over m z prime square. Then if I look here, uh, so if you remember this part here um, was coming simply from the evaluation of this matrix element. And the matrix element is the same in the standard model and this uh, new physics uh, theory that I'm, uh, uh, the, this new physics part that I'm adding. So I expect to have the same dependence, same matrix element. So here I write the times, uh, same. Um, then I will have some numerical factor I can compute, I can tell you, this is, uh, okay, 8 over 3, very good. And then uh, finally I have to take care of, again of uh, RGs, okay. I would be maybe tempted to uh, put in the same, uh, you know, RG number. Actually if you want to be, you know, a little bit uh, less sloppy, you should put a different one. We call it prime. Because here, so here basically the idea is uh, to run from, uh, if you want, the um, MW, MW scale to the, to the scale of the B meson, okay? This is what the set B is giving us. And here instead uh, will be the RG from the MZ prime to the MB, okay? <laughs> so this can be slightly different numbers, okay? And uh, yeah, so this is all I have, uh, okay? And then, uh, so this, uh, no, I, I can put numbers and then compute this delta M uh, of the B sub S system and see how much I get, right? So bottom line is that what I see from here, from this exercise, is that I expect uh, a bound uh, on this combination of G prime over MZ prime, okay? But then uh, you see that 
so I would expect that the bound is uh, kind of strong, right? Because uh, uh, you see from here that uh, here I have a three-level piece uh, um, no, competing with uh, the loop piece of the standard model. Here I have this uh, suppression by uh, uh, 12 uh, pi square. And then also if I compare these two pieces, you see that the new physics part doesn't have the suppression by, by CKM. Okay. So in general, I expect that the, if I put this guy here to be at the TV scale and this guy to be an electroweak coupling, uh, um, I, will be, I will be in trouble. Okay. Um, and, uh, and in fact, this is what is happening. Um, so um, in general, what I have is that typically G prime over MC prime say has to be for this particular system uh, at least of the order of one over um, um, yeah let me call it uh, 100 TV okay um, that shows you that indeed uh, I mean the scale that we are probing uh, is much higher than the TV scale probed directly by the LHC of course, here, you know, I'm cheating a little bit because uh, we are not probing directly a scale, so we are not probing directly in this, uh, this uh, mz prime, but I'm probing uh, the, this ratio of g prime over mz prime, so nobody's telling us that uh, this g prime has to be over order one. Okay. Um, very good. Um, so, uh, can I show a table somehow on the screen? Or maybe I can... I mean, this is not, this is a matter of curiosity, but, uh, and I don't have really the will to write a lot of numbers. <laughs> um, yeah, we can do as usual. At, uh, What I've done is uh, to collect for you the you know, a summary of uh, some of the scales that we are probing. So here what you see are the several systems. So you see here, this is the count system, uh, SD, the D meson system, uh, B sub D and B sub S. And here I'm showing some of the operators that we saw at the beginning today. No? Now, uh, let's focus here on, the, on this part of the table. Here I'm putting this uh, C and P, so this is the Wilson coefficient that we put equal to 1, just as an example. And this is uh, the bound on the new physics scale lambda in TV. Okay? Now, let's look a little bit at these numbers. So, so first of all, you see that uh, um, um, each of these number is at least, uh, say, you know, 100 TV or even higher, even 1,000 uh, TV. So in general, we are probing high scales, as we already mentioned. If you are curious, so you see that generically, again, as we would expect, if you write down Wilson coefficients that are complex, so here you see an imaginary part, the, the bounds are getting even stronger because we have also the, no, the, the measurements of the CP violating phase in the mixing. So you see it here that the bounds are even stronger. And then also something that can be a little bit curious at first uh, is uh, when you look at the, the d meson system. So yesterday we have argued that uh, the d meson system is the most complicated because uh, theoretically it's hard to compute, right? And uh, the standard model is telling us that uh, uh, the d meson mixing system uh, has just, uh, you know, the standard model is giving us a very small contribution. But nevertheless, uh, the, the new physics scale that we are probing with d mesons is also pretty high. Reason being that since the standard model is so tiny, it's easy for, for new physics uh, you know, to get uh, uh, to, to, to give a sizable and too large new physics effect. Okay. So also the dimension mixing system is pretty important to test the scales. Okay, that's the the bottom line. Okay? Yeah? You have a question? That's right. That's right. Yeah, this is uh, typically, yeah, when you see tables like this or fits, uh, this is what people are doing to put just one operator at a time. Of course, when you write down a new physics theory, it's more complicated than that. But, um, yeah. 
at least this is also a good way to see you know what are the um, the operators that are more important uh, for example here what I can see is that the standard model operator is uh, constrained but there are operators that are even more constrained like this uh, s right the left uh, combination so it's a good way to to see constraints you had a question so, so, so my question is when, when you've got these bounds I mean you look at the formula right there the leading term has got uh, CK and matrix elements in it yeah is the game you play you do a global fit to everything <laughs> with one extra operator or... Right, okay. right. Yeah. yeah, this is um, what is so, done in this so context. So you're looking, you know, this beautiful picture you had two lectures ago, and you're looking for how much I can pull one of these guys off of the... That's right, that's right, absolutely, yeah. Of course, I mean, um, people do also something more um, uh, generic or more complicated to do a more a global fit. But, uh, yeah, in this context, when people are showing, uh, you know, the constraint on a single operator, this is what people are doing. Any other? Yeah. Um, in principle, yes. So it depends. Uh, so the question was, uh, when I do this exercise here, if uh, there is uh, some interference between the standard model and the new physics effect. Because here, basically, you know, I have some over the, the, the two pieces. So. In principle, uh, you have interference. Um, um, so here, so for, for, for delta M, um, yeah, so you have interference. <laughs> sometimes it's kind of smaller because sometimes basically what you can uh, approximate is uh, to have this that is uh, two times uh, the real part of M12. And then, uh, yeah, you don't care about the interference, obviously. But, uh, but uh, absolutely, yeah, you have to do the full calculation. And uh, especially, I don't know, if you think about phases, um, uh, phase in the mixing angle, you have really to consider the, the full phase of the, of the, of the full M, M12 um, matrix element. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one can spend really hours in computing this uh, correctly. But this is to give you really a flavor of uh, why we are probing new, high new physics scale and a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, details about how to compute it. Yeah. Um, okay. Very good. So this is, uh, yeah, as I, as I wrote in this slide, this is what we call the new physics flower puzzle. Nam namely, you know, we, as we have, uh, no, as we know, we have uh, uh, motivations to consider new physics scale at the, sorry, new physics at the TV scale, but then flower is telling us uh, this new physics seem to be pretty heavy. Okay. Now, of course, you can, uh, you can have different approaches to this problem. One is to say, ah, we are kind of unlucky, all uh, new physics should be at a very, very high scale. And these scales are, of course, scales that we are not probing and we won't be probing directly. But then my approach is a little bit more positive approach to say, uh, look, what we are probing is really, is really this combination here. And then maybe the solution is that this G prime uh, is something non-trivial, right? So we have to be clever in writing down our theories uh, in such a way that uh, we have a G prime that is somehow suppressed, uh, and then therefore also the, the bound on any physics scale won't be so high as shown in that table. Okay. Um, so let's. Um, uh, <coughs> so let me let me show you something. So let's suppose now that in this diagram here, indeed, instead of having a G prime uh, dependence, uh, so an electric coupling, we have also some dependence on the VCKM. Okay? Similar to what we have in the standard model here. Um, so actually, so if so, and then if we put here the same CKM structure, VTS, VTB, square, um, something happened to the match? Or? <laughs> no, <laughs> I was wondering. Um, okay, so so if we put here the CKM, uh, what we what we already guess is that uh, this piece here will be pretty much suppressed because of VTS square. This is small, okay. And um, and uh, in fact, uh, so if we go, sorry, if we go back. Uh, 
to this, uh, where is it? Um, to this bound here, what we see is that this uh, will be suppressed by VTS square, so I go back to the TV scale uh, type of bound. Okay. That is good because this is indeed the, 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 the new physics scale that we are probing uh, at, at colliders. Um, but uh, how can we formalize something like this, right? Because now I said, okay, you have the same dependence, uh, but what type of theories are telling us that we have the same dependence on the CKM? Okay? So this leads us uh, um, discussing what we call the minimal ferro violating uh, ansatz. Okay? So this is a minimal flavor violation. So what is this, uh, this idea? <coughs> so this is, uh, first of all, an old idea of uh, formulated uh, in, uh, sorry, in 87 by Civupula and Georgi. Um, so to explain this, uh, this mechanism, uh, we have to go back to the flavor symmetries that we, we saw the first day. That's why I was, uh, you know, bothering you uh, counting three parameters and you three things. Um, so the first day, so in the, in the quark sector, what we have seen is that uh, we have this uh, famous uh, U3 to the third power flavor symmetry. This is what we saw on Monday. That is then broken by the Yukawas. That's right. So you look at your notes and you see that we discussed this. Um, but then uh, the idea is that uh, so minimal ferro violation, uh, what is uh, telling us is that uh, the uh, U3 to the third power breaking uh, is uh, coming uh, only from the Yukawa, so the standard model. So from the, uh, from uh, standard model uh, Yukawas, so this is uh, YU and YD. So whatever new physics theory I write down um, can always you know, look back at this uh, uh, large global symmetry. And what I need is that this uh, global symmetry is only broken by these uh, two Yukawas. Okay, and this is what is happening really in the standard model. Um, so also, so this is the first thing that uh, we learn from MFE. The, the second thing is that, uh, um, so I will show you a little bit more details, but let me first of all state the, the ansatz. Ansat. Uh, so uh, this U3 to the third power is uh, restored in the Lagrangian if uh, we think uh, if, uh, okay, let me abbreviate, if YU and YD are spurions. So let's see a little bit what I mean with this, okay. So already from here you see that I'm uh, starting uh, to think about this Yukawa coupling as uh, spurion fields, okay. So let's write down again the, the Yukawa Lagrangian of the standard model, okay. Can you guys actually read here down in the blackboard? Or? Okay. Um, so let's do this. So I have, so in the standard model, this is a Q left, YD, D right, X plus, um, Q left, YU, So this is my standard model, uh, Yokawa Lagrangian. Um, so let me, um, so here I have um, my U3 to the third power. Let's put this order. So this is a Q, U, and D. So these are the three U3 factors that we were considering, right? One associated to the left-handed uh, doublet of quarks, uh, right-handed up and right-handed down as we saw. So let's uh, write down the property of transformation of the several uh, pieces that we see here. Okay. So for the Q left bar here, I will have a three bar, one, one. 
So it's an anti-triplet of uh, U3Q and then singlet of uh, U3U and U3D. Right. Uh, then similarly, this guy here is uh, 1, 1, 3. Okay. Now, if we want to have this uh, symmetry here restored in the standard model, so this guy will have property of transformation under this uh, U3 to the third power. Correct. So what, how, how does uh, this guy transform? What are the numbers of this? Speak up. <laughs> uh, you were saying? OK, very good. Yeah, this is a, uh, oh. OK. So we know that this is a, yeah, a Spurian field that has this property of transformation under this U3 to the third power. And then, of course, I mean, I can do the same exact thing here. So for completeness, I can write it down. There's nothing really. So this is uh, 1, 3, 1, 1. And this will be 3, 3 power 1. <coughs> OK. So the idea, so now that we know um, what this means, at least for the standard model, the idea is to apply exactly the same thing to whatever new physics theory we write down. Okay? Um, so let's, um, let's write here. So first of all, we can apply this, uh, these ansatz uh, to effective field theories, uh, so to this uh, Lagrangian that we wrote down there. Um, so how can we write down the operators that are uh, uh, under this minimum of violation idea? So first of all, we can write down pieces like um, Q left, um, um, YU, YU dagger Q left. So at the end, uh, I need to write down all no, these uh, four quark operators. Uh, these are just uh, you know, two bilinears that I put together. No? And then you see that pieces like these are invariant uh, uh, under the U3 to the third power symmetry once that I consider these guys as purions. Okay. Um, then I can write down more complicated things, like I can take a D-right, uh, I can put a YD dagger, YU, YU dagger. Q left, and then, um, yeah, I mean, in principle here, no, I could expand, uh, and I can, could put more and more Yukawas, uh, but then the idea is that, you know, at a certain point, these operators will be more and more suppressed, so they are negligible because they are suppressed by more and more powers of small Yukawa couplings, okay? Uh, so in principle, no, I could write down also something like uh, D right, uh, Y down dagger, Y up, Y up dagger, Y down, D right, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you can demonstrate that everything is invariant under the flavor symmetry, and uh, and then of course this uh, will give me my you know operator here for the meso mixing system. Okay. Um, but then you see that, uh, uh, so these so this, this Yukawa couplings that you see here will be the Yukawa couplings that go inside my Wilson coefficients that won't be any more of the order one. That's right. Uh, so I can demonstrate, uh, uh, you know, I can, uh, can fix a basis and, then and I can demonstrate that this will lead to something like uh, Q left I, um, Y top square, um, Vt i Vt j star Q left j. So this, you know, I can go to a to a basis uh, here. For example, I'm choosing a basis in which uh, the y d is diagonal. So you can demonstrate this thing. So this is uh, y down, y s, y bottom, and then the y up uh, will be BCKM times again something diagonal. So let me write uh, Y up, Y charm, Y top. 
So if you go to this particular basis, uh, you can demonstrate that this is what is uh, happening uh, once that uh, um, you expand and you keep only the leading terms. Okay. And you see that this is a, you know, a structure that is very familiar. This is the, the structure of the standard model. So I will have the same CKM dependence, and, uh, and then uh, I have a white top. So this is uh, the leading term. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then uh, okay, I can do the same exercise here. Here I would expect that uh, I have some additional suppression by the uh, um, Yukawa in the down setter. And uh, in fact, this will give me d right uh, i, y down uh, i, i. And then I have the same y top square v t i, v t j, uh, q left j. OK. So everything that I've written down has the same dependence on the CKM elements. This is good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I can really, you know, with this uh, operator here, I can write down again the new physics effect in, uh, for example, meson mixing. And what I see is that, indeed, I get a, a dependence like this, and therefore, the new physics scale that I'm probing is much lower. Okay? So, as a conclusion, uh, what we see is that mere favor violation is, uh, you know, a cute idea. Of course, uh, we call it an idea because this is uh, simply, you know, a statement. I'm not demonstrating uh, why this is the case. We don't have really, yeah, there are attempts, but there are not really good theories, in my opinion, for uh, uh, predicting that we have a behavior like this, uh, mirror field violation. But still, uh, what we expect is that once that we apply these ansatz, uh, then uh, the new physics effect in flavor are there, but they are not that large. Okay? So it's somehow more or less addressing this new physics flavor puzzle. Okay? Questions? Sort of said in, uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, that's right. Yeah. Also, um, so another thing that I want to mention here is that uh, you see, here I'm writing down the operators in the down setter. You can do exactly the same thing, but considering uh, you write, so the operators in the up setter. And what you learn is that, similarly to the standard model, also mean of violation is telling you that the new physics effect in the up setter are very, very, very small. This is a really, uh, basically, you apply everything that you have learned for the standard model, and uh, you get similar things in mean of violation. OK? Um, so uh, yeah, during this lecture, since uh, you know, I could speak uh, about uh, uh, flavor protection mechanisms for many hours, but uh, this is a possible way to protect new physics theories from uh, too large flavor change in intercurrence. Uh, there are additional ways, like uh, you, know, you can write down theories uh, that are based on approximate symmetries, like uh, U2 approximated symmetries, symmetry. So there are additional ways to protect uh, uh, the flavor structure of new physics theories. And, um, and uh, so in my opinion, you know, this new physics flavor puzzle is telling us something. But uh, in my opinion, it's really telling us that uh, the, the, the Nature, the, 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 the nature doesn't choose a completely random flavor structure, basically. <laughs> right? We have to be clever in flavor. Okay. Good. Um, so now that we have studied the EFTs, uh, I want to go. Um, I want now to study a little bit of uh, theories. Uh, I mean, concrete theories without uh, thinking of integrated out, integrating out new degrees of freedom. And we learn a little bit of the you know, complementarity between direct searches on new particles and, uh, and uh, constraints from flower. Okay? So that's what I want to do now. Uh, if you don't have any other question on this part. No. Okay. So let's uh, see. Yeah, I can write down here. Let's so start with uh, theories. Uh, the theories with uh, multi Higgs. So 
So in general, I want to discuss this with you because we see that all the you know, flavor structure of, uh, of the standard model is coming from uh, Higgs interactions. So the question is, uh, if we start writing down uh, theories with uh, more than one Higgs uh, doublet, uh, what happens uh, to our uh, flavor structure? Okay. So uh, for a matter of simplicity, we can focus on two Higgs doublet models. Could speak about Susie. Let's see if we have time to speak about Suzy already today. But, uh, so let's speak a little bit about two exabit models for, for the moment. Okay? So uh, as we know, no, the, the, the main uh, uh, models that are studied in the literature are what we call type, uh, you know, this one, uh, two, three, four, two exabit models. Now, I have to admit that I never remember you know, what is uh, three versus four and so on and so forth. But what we have to have in mind that these are theories that are based on Z2 symmetries. So in principle, no, if, since you have two X doublet, X1 and the X2, um, then you can write down four Yukawa interactions with quarks, right? Um, so I can write down uh, uh, X D one. So we'll have two for the down sector. X D two, D right, and then correspondingly two for the up sector. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> You can share, no? <laughs> Very good. So, going back to our Yukawas. <laughs> So this is uh, no, generically what I can write down. So everything is allowed by, by symmetries, right? Uh, if I don't impose any symmetry on top of it. So here, okay, I'm, I'm considering this guy of uh, yeah, hypercharge plus one half, and this is minus one half. That's why it's about daggers that you see. And then all these uh, couplings here, in general, are three times three complex matrices. Okay. So this is generically what I can write down for the uh, Yukawa part of the Lagrangian, once that I have two X doublet. But then, uh, yeah, going back to our type 1, 2, 3, 4, two X doublet models, the idea here is to impose uh, some Z2 symmetry in such a way that some of these Yukawas are equal to zero. Okay? So more specifically, um, for type 2, this is the, you know, the susy like uh, uh, two X doublet model. Um, so type 2 has this property of transformation under Z2, so x1 goes to minus x1, d right goes to minus d right. And then uh, at the end of the day, if I impose this, uh, what we see is that uh, this is not allowed anymore, and, uh, and this is also not allowed anymore. Okay. So at the end of the day, I will have a Yuka one Yukawa for the down type quarks, and one you cover for the uptight quarks. Okay? Now, these are uh, very much studied in the literature. Um, uh, of course, I mean, uh, the other types, I am changing the Z2 charges, so some uh, other U covers will be equal to zero. Um, but then the idea is that, uh, so we have um, what we call uh, natural uh, flavor conservation. Um, so this was a name, uh, um, so this is uh, 76, Glasho and Weinberg. So you can look uh, for, the, for the paper, but uh, so basically the idea is that uh, what you end up having is uh, you have a specific for the down sector, you have a specific for the up sector. Then uh, what you do is uh, not to do all the magic or diagonalizing and so on and so forth. And uh, what you learn 
is that again uh, there are no flavor changing uh, neutral currents uh, mediated uh, by the Higgs, uh, by all the Higgs bosons, so by the 125 GV Higgs as well as uh, the heavy Higgs and the heavy pseudoscalar. So you cannot write down uh, you know, vertexes like, uh, I don't know, S, D, and the Higgs. This won't be there. Okay? So this is similar to uh, what we have in the standard model. And uh, that's why, you know, broadly speaking, once that you have theories like this, you don't have particularly to worry about flavor. There are exceptions. Uh, um, yeah, we can uh, speak a little bit offline about this. But generically, these are relatively protected uh, models against flavor. Um, but then the question is, um, can we, you know, can we write something else? So here I want to do an example. Um, because, uh, so as I said, I mean, these type 1 to 4 are very well studied. And also in terms of, you know, collider phenomenology, we know really a lot. So there are searches of Atlas and CMS that are targeted on uh, this type of uh, new Higgs bosons. So these uh, heavy Higgs uh, that are coming from there. OK? But then the question is, uh, uh, you know, do we really need a structure like this, or we can write down additional uh, 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 type of models? Two. No. OK. <laughs> um, so since we have uh, spoken a little bit about mirror flow violation, let's see what happens if we impose mirror flow violation uh, here. OK? This is, a, first of all, an exercise. And second of all, uh, I'm using this to show you that, indeed, we can uh, have something a little bit more complex and also re richer for the, for the phenomenology. OK? Um, so if we impose mineral flavor violation, um, mineral flavor violation in two X doublet models, um, so let's see what, uh, what we obtain. So mirror flavor violation, uh, um, first of all, uh, we, so mirror flavor violation allows uh, all of these U-covers. So XU1, U2, D1, D2. These are all different from 0. Um, we might be worried because once uh, that we have uh, all of these, then uh, again, uh, doing the process of diagonalizing and so on. Of course, I'm not going to the details, but I hope that uh, you can do it at home. right? Um, but uh, I mean, that we'll have diagrams like this, right? Uh, SD. Uh, <coughs> and then DS. And this is mediated by, actually, by everybody. So these are um, yeah, some combination of this uh, xd1 and xd2. Okay. And, and if, if this, uh, this uh, uh, matrix is here are generic, uh, then uh, we ended up having the same new physics flavor puzzle right? Uh, that we have uh, discussed uh, just before. Um, <laughs> it depends with whom you talk. So somebody defining type 3, again, as a type based on some C2 symmetry. So you have some combination. I think that uh, uh, some of these Yukavas that goes to 0, somebody else, I think, defined this type 3 model as the most generic model that is written down uh, up there. So where you have all these uh, Yukawa Lagrangian, uh, Yukawa couplings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, People are using different, uh, the same name for different things, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, there are type 3 models that are based also on Z2 symmetries. Because you can uh, change uh, in four different ways uh, Z2 symmetries and uh, put uh, one of some of the Siyukawas to 0. OK. Um, so, if, uh, so if generic, then trouble. Um, but then, uh, as we expect, mean of violation will tell us that these uh, X uh, Yukawa couplings are not generic. Okay. So let's see what, um, what these are now. 
So what we know is that uh, every, uh, every matrix here will uh, depend on the Yukawas of the standard model because these are the only uh, you know, spurions that are breaking the flower symmetry, as we have stated. Um, then as a matter of definition, you know, I can pick one of the Yukawas uh, and define it as uh, the Yukawa, oops, the Yukawa, the standard model that is breaking the, the flower symmetry. This is the definition, right? But then the other one, so I'm taking this one here. Then I have another one in the down sector. Now, the other one, we know that won't be generic anymore. OK. So what can we write down for this according to the minimal flow violation uh, idea? Some guess, something. What, what product? <laughs> um, OK, so, so y, y t. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, so this won't be invariant, right? So the, this guy here won't have the same property of transformation of this, right? So we need additional thing. You, Right. Um, so some, some piece like this I can write down. This will have the same property of transformation of this. And then you know, I can put uh, I don't know, a coefficient in front. So this is, a, uh, let's say, a complex uh, number. So here, you, know, you have to keep in mind, this is a number, so that this, this guy here won't have flavor indexes. This is just a number. And then in terms of the flavor structure, we have a term like this, for example. Right. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, this is uh, not the only thing that I can write down because, uh, of course, I can. Uh, so the idea is to expand uh, um, in, uh, in, the, in the small Yukawa couplings. So we'll have terms like, uh, uh, how do I call it, uh, epsilon b. Yd. So this will be the first term, right? So again, this is another complex number. And the, so we have a piece that is proportional to this. And then uh, um, actually, we'll have also some term that goes like the you cover the up. Um, because basically, yeah, there, there are terms that are breaking uh, the, uh, the diagonal structure. Because if I expand everything in y down, we'll have something always diagonal, basically. Um, so that we'll have terms like uh, epsilon 2, yu, dagger, yu, yd. OK. So you can demonstrate that uh, every term is, uh, you know, when I plug in inside the Lagrangian, uh, I will have terms uh, that are all, uh, um, you know, that are not breaking the u3 to the third power flavor symmetry once that I can see these spurions. Is that fine for everybody? Um, and in principle, as I said here, uh, this is an infinite sum, but uh, as we expect, uh, the, the additional terms will be more and more suppressed by small uh, CKM or small Yukawa couplings. Uh, then this is in the down sector, and of course, I can do the same thing for the up sector. I will have a different uh, you know, combination of uh, Y up and Y down. Um, so what happens then? <coughs> so I, I think a good exercise would be to, you know, use the, the Yukawa structure that we see in that blackboard there to compute the physical couplings of the, all the Higgs's uh, of our theory. <coughs> Oops. So let's see what happens now. So, um, 
So now I do all my diagonalization of the, so I go to mass against states for the quarks, and I see that I cannot diagonalize uh, the couplings of the physical Higgs bosons. So I will have diagrams like this. If I impose a structure like this uh, coming from M MFE, but now these couplings here, again, uh, will be CKM suppressed. So the bad thing is that I have flower changing neutral currents at the tree level versus the loop level of the standard model. But this is highly non-generic, and these couplings are suppressed. OK? Um, so bottom line is that you can compute, again, all the you know, meson mixing observables. This was a diagram for KK bar mixing. So I can compute that I'm K or that I'm B sub S, and so on and so forth. And what I learned now is that this, uh, um, the mass of the heavy Higgs or the pseudoscalar can be of the order of a few hundred GV, still uh, being consistent with flavor physics. Okay. Um, so this uh, um, is a, a different flavor structure than type 1, 2, 3, 4, obviously. Nevertheless, uh, doesn't create too much troubles for flavor. And if you're curious, so if you are interested in, interested in doing research on uh, Higgs, uh, um, Higgs collider phenomenology, if you have a theory like that, uh, what you learn is that the phenomenology of, uh, of these guys, uh, the heavy Higgs and the pseudoscalar, so the pheno, will be different uh, than the pheno, uh, say, in a, in a type 2 to X tablet model. That is, as I already said, the, the leading model that is searched for by Atlas and CMS. Uh, so for the people that are interested, I can give you some references. But uh, you know, one, one interesting thing is that, for example, the, I don't know, the first thing that comes to my mind, <laughs> if you want, is that the branchy ratios of uh, the heavy Higgs to BB bar and tau tau. So if you. So let's write this this way. So so the couplings to um, to down type quarks uh, will be different, right, in this model if compared to a type two, right, because of this flower structure. Uh, for type two, you can demonstrate that this uh, um, goes like uh, the mass of the bottom square three times, uh, uh, so this is the color factor over mass of the tau square. Okay? And instead for, say, type uh, MFV, um, so here you will have still uh, a dependence like this, mv square over m tau square. But uh, here you will have uh, extra dependence. So let me write it as, uh, so you have a function uh, of uh, this epsilon b where epsilon b is, uh, again, uh, this coefficient that I put here in front. Okay? So if epsilon b is uh, not too small, uh, basically the ratio of these branch ratios will be very different. Uh, and then bottom line is that uh, you can uh, uh, suppress uh, um, the tau tau branch ratio. Okay? So uh, as a small parenthesis for the people doing collider phenomenology, um, so at uh, TATLAS uh, and CMS, uh, there are many of the searches for these heavy Higgs bosons, right? Uh, and uh, the, if you want, the, among the most stringent uh, uh, constraints uh, are coming indeed from searches for heavy Higgs going to tau tau, thinking about you know, SUSY type models or type 2 uh, like models. And, uh, and typically, when you see you know, experimental talks, you see always uh, bounds in this uh, m, uh, the mass of the heavy Higgs, uh, and tangent beta. So tangent beta is, uh, is the parameter that is entering really in this uh, um, heavy Higgs tau tau coupling, or heavy Higgs bb coupling. And, uh, and then you see always, you no know, this um, bounds that are telling you that depending on the mass, you can not go to two large values of tangent beta. Okay, um, and then in models like this, so in MFE type of models, uh, what you can do is to trade uh, some part of the branch relation to tau tau 
two branch relation to be V bar, and then, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you will have constraints that are weaker. Okay? Depending uh, on the value of this epsilon B, mainly. Okay? So for this, I I'm going a little bit uh, fast. So do you guys want a little bit more details on this? Or uh, what do you think? Yes? No? Yes. Somebody says no? Or <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, so the idea here for, so I don't have notes on this, so I will <laughs> improvise a bit, but uh, so for type two, um, uh, so, so the idea is uh, experimentally looking for heavy Higgs going to tau tau, they have in mind the type two to accelerate model, or a SUSY-like model where you have uh, couplings of this uh, heavy Higgs, uh, similarly also for the pseudo scalar, with BB bar that goes like uh, MB over V tangent beta. You can simply compute it, okay? And, and similarly, the coupling to tau is M tau over V tangent beta, okay? So the idea is uh, at the LHC is to produce a heavy, heavy Higgs. Um, sorry. Uh, so you can do, um, yeah, you can do basically BB bar going to heavy Higgs. Uh, you can write down diagrams like this, or you can write down the gluon initiated uh, with two, two bottom in the final state. And then uh, this guy goes to tau tau. Okay. And, and, and you see that uh, from the, from the production mode here, you will get the tangent beta. That's why what you expect is that if tangent beta is large, uh, then you produce uh, more and more heavy Higgs bosons, uh, and therefore you are able to set constraints. As you see from here, no, the, the, this branch ratio doesn't really depend on tangent beta, so the tangent beta is really coming from the production here. That is announced. Um, so you'll have a yeah, constraints like this that are kind of stringent. Uh, so I don't have really a plot, but uh, what I remember is that really if you have a 500 GV, I think the bound goes up to, I don't know, five or seven in tangent beta, right? And these extend to, I think the latest plot are up to uh, three TV maybe, two TV, I don't remember. These are really massive guys, okay? Um, so this is for a type two the standard, uh, you know, interpretation of this uh, heavy Higgs to tau tau searches. But then you see that, uh, I mean, this relies on the fact that we are writing down the Yukawa as in a type two model. If we change the Yukawa structure, of course, these couplings will change. Correct. And then what I'm telling you is that uh, if you do the exercise and you take the Yukawas that uh, we wrote down there, no, for MFV, uh, so for MFE, this uh, heavy Higgs to BB bar uh, um, okay. um, will be still something like MB over V tangent beta, but then it's a function of this additional coefficient epsilon B. That is a free parameter in my theory, right? Uh, I don't know what this number is. And then uh, in terms of, uh, you know, parameters that I can test, I can uh, test uh, not only tangent beta, but also this uh, epsilon B parameter. And depending on the value of epsilon B, the, the, the bound on tangent beta can be different, uh, right? And then, uh, yeah, I can end up uh, having, uh, uh, as I said, the weaker bounds, uh, only to very large values of tangent beta, depending on the epsilon B that I have, okay? So this to say that you have in mind that, uh, uh, you know, the results that you see a lot of times coming from the LHC for uh, heavy scalars uh, really do depend a lot on the flower structure that you are putting in your model, okay? And we should not be too much biased that we have as the only possibility a type 2 to x double model. We can have many theories also with a little bit different phenomenology or more or less stringent bounds, okay? So that's the conclusion of all this exercise. Any other question? Yeah. Pretty general question, but uh, how important is MFB for models that we're looking at? Uh, like, how many of them really depend on that? Those assumptions. 
uh, not sure I understand the question, sorry. <laughs> so for the models that people are interested in? in yeah, general? like SUSE or... Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. well, how, how many of them rely on the MSV hypothesis? So, uh, yeah, the, the next... Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's answer this question in the context of SUSE, but this you can generalize it, you know? So I wanted to discuss with you, but I think today there won't be time, uh, SUSE. So SUSE, you know, is a sort of a complex theory, and uh, can have different approaches to SUSE, right? So in terms of the flavor setter of SUSE, this is super complicated because you have all the soft uh, terms that are uh, in general breaking the flavor, the flavor symmetry of the standard model. So if you just consider it uh, as, as a generic, uh, uh, if you consider a generic soft Lagrangian, you end up with a so-called you know, new physics uh, a SUSE flavor puzzle, namely, again, two large flavor changes with recurrence. So, you can have two approaches. You say, okay, I don't care favor. <laughs> but uh, the, the other approach is to say, okay, these uh, soft masses or trilinear terms, uh, uh, the soft breaking Lagrangian has to be non-general. And I can apply minor favor violation. Or uh, some other mechanism like approximated due to symmetries and so on and so forth. Uh, and this tells us really something about the structure of this uh, soft breaking Lagrangian. And therefore, also the phenomenology of squarks, for example, will change uh, um, um, because of this assumption that you do in flavor. Okay. So in this sense, uh, once that you study the phenomenology, so here I, I did an example for two x tablet model. You can do the example for SUSE, twin x models, composite x models, and so on and so forth. Uh, the phenomenology of a lot of these particles uh, really do depend on the flavor structure that you put. Um, yeah. And then you can connect, if you want, what you are looking for at uh, directly at LHC, uh, at Atlas and CMS, to what, uh, you know, to the flavor, flavor structure that you are imposing in the model. Yeah. Um, of course, I mean, it is true, we don't have to think that every search at LHC depends on the flavor structure, so we have, uh, no, I don't know, in the context of multi Higgs doublet uh, uh, models, we have searches for heavy Higgs going to WW and ZZ. That, in some sense, you don't really clear care of flavor. So there are a lot of measurements that do not really clear care of flavor. But then whenever now you have to do with uh, jets and the quarks in the final state or even leptons, then you have to think a little bit about flavor, the flavor structure you are plugging in. You had another question? Or? Uh, yeah, this is just a minor one. But um, in principle, like these functions that depend on epsilon D, also depend on like these, these higher terms but that's we're right collecting it because we're just saying oh it's like at least y squared smaller so um, it, it depends a bit so for the example I made uh, yes um, then uh, you can uh, so you might think about um, searching uh, so saying something that uh, if experimentalists around uh, are around they would uh, kill me because they don't like that type of searches but uh, you could think about uh, searching for uh, a heavy Higgs going to a bottom and a strange. So this is flavor violating, of course, no? And then uh, you want to have a flavor violating coupling, and this comes from here. So you have to, because, I mean, these terms here would be diagonal. So it, it depends a little bit what type of, uh, you know, signature you're looking for. For, yeah, broadly speaking, uh, yes, that's why I said the experimentalist would, uh, would uh, kill me. So this is uh, yeah, a, a bad example if you want. No? But this to, to say no, that if you consider some flavor violating couplings, uh, you have to consider additional terms uh, because the first term won't give you flavor violating couplings. But yeah, I, I agree that this is a bad example from the collider perspective. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So, actually, uh, so this, uh, this search is here. Um, so if you look at the, the type of search that they are doing, uh, um, so, of course, you have, uh, as you say, you know, um, <coughs> sorry, production modes like this. So this is uh, my gluon fusion. Uh, but then, Basically, it depends what, what Atlas and CMS are looking for. So here you could look for, in the final state, uh, B-jets. No? 
So you can write down the diagram uh, that is grown initiated, but with, uh, that is radiating two Bs, right? And uh, so it depends if you are trying to tag B jets or not. Uh, and this can tell you the difference. But in general, I agree that uh, for, uh, for this RCC, uh, for heavy Higgs going to tau tau, uh, you have to sum over BB going to heavy Higgs and glue glue going to heavy Higgs. Okay. Does it answer to your question or? That's right. Yeah. But uh, so it depends a bit on the signal region what is more important. Huh? In terms of cross sections, um, if you think about the very large values of tangent beta, uh, this cross section, well, yeah, I mean, here you have this coupling, but also here you can put uh, either B or top, right? Uh, and for the B, uh, here you will have again tangent beta enhancement. Uh, so, yeah. So, bottom line for your question, uh, both, both processes are included. Uh, and when, uh, when uh, experimentalists are doing the interpretation, uh, they have uh, indeed to simulate both, both production modes. Okay. You had another question? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's the, um, if you want, the, the downside of MFE. That is something that we are really stating. Uh, so we don't have really a theory that is telling us why this is the case. So here, when I brought down this expression, it's simply because I want to have something. So when I plug in this x, d2, in my Lagrangian, uh, I see that if I consider this uh, yd and y up as purions, so then the flavor symmetry is restored. So this is simply an answer that I'm applying to a Lagrangian. It's not really a theory, if you want, uh, in this respect. And then, uh, since the answer is telling us something about the flavor structure, no, the breaking of this U3 to the third power, but it's not really telling us anything about couplings. That's why these and these and so on and so forth can be whatever number. Okay. It's true. I mean, uh, you don't have, uh, I mean, this is, I'm not really presenting you a theory of flavor. This is a, an hypothesis that we are plugging in um, to sort of simulate a standard model. That is nice because it's suppressing flavor uh, violation. You have still flavor violation, so you have you know, couplings like this or many other couplings. Still, they are small, so they don't bother your flavor structure too much. And at the same time, as I argued there, you have uh, no, a phenomenology that can be different than the usual phenomenology of a model studied, uh, uh, where you don't have really flavor changing with recurrence at the three level as in type 2. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Also, actually, so if you are, maybe we can speak offline that I feel a bit of pressure, but <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But so, so okay, the last thing, because I, I think it's quite interesting, you know, so you could start um, uh, saying, uh, so you can truncate this, uh, this uh, expansion at the first order. So you write this, epsilon b, yd. No, you could truncate it, but uh, so the interesting thing here that is a, an interesting thing in general about a mirror flavor violation is that this structure here wouldn't be um, stable under uh, RGs. So if you take this Lagrangian at uh, whatever, uh, one TV scale, you run it down, uh, what you see is that you will generate also these additional terms. Okay. Um, so th this, uh, so you find in the literature some, some papers uh, uh, so they, they call this as aligned to uh, <coughs> extrovert model, aligned because of this proportionality. Uh, this is a nice hypothesis, but this is not stable. Okay. Mean of evaluation is nice because actually, mean of evaluation, if you do RGEs, this is completely stable. The only thing that will change are these co complex parameters that will be a bit different depending on the scale, but this structure is always there. It is nice. Okay, so I think we have to stop for today. <laughs>